how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We are now, in many ways, in exile. We are now in the strange land, and we're now in the strange land in our very homes. Can we sing Lord's song in the strange land? Can we overcome our fears so as to act with courage? Can we let go our excessive self-concern, which endangerment tends to produce in us? Can we open ourselves up to help others? This is For the Life of the World, a conversational podcast about seeking and living a life worthy of our humanity. I'm Evan Rosa for the Yale Center for Faith and Culture. Welcome to our very first episode of what will be a weekly podcast, dropping episodes every Saturday. In just a moment, I'll pass things over to Miroslav Wolf to say why we're starting this show. But here at the outset, as of the first week of April 2020, we'll be publishing regular episodes, and you'll be able to subscribe in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you love to listen to podcasts. We're living in a time of rupture, confusion, anxiety, and loss of control. We need space to mourn, lament, and grieve. Our human condition makes us fragile, but while we have life in us, we can create, work, learn, and grow and we can share that life with each other. We're offering these conversations in a spirit of creativity and hope, which we give to and receive from each other and hope to inspire in you. And we offer them ultimately in the spirit of Christ, who is the life of the world and who offers us life that is truly life. These are strange days indeed, and home is starting to feel like a strange land. But can we continue to sing the Lord's song? Here's Miroslav with a response to this pandemic. COVID-19, reflections on how to live in the midst of it, and why we're producing this show. Thank you for joining us. I'm excited for what's ahead. Dear friends, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Miroslav Wolf, and I teach systematic theology at Yale Divinity School, and I am the director of the Yale Center for Faith and Culture. And one of the things that we do at the center, uh, we try to think through, uh, research, uh, write, uh, and speak on the questions that are facing us uh, at any given time. And obviously today, um, the great pandemic has gathered all our thoughts around itself. And uh, we maybe can say that we live uh, in COVID-19 time. Many of us have become sick, um, many of us here in this country, but many of us in the world uh, as well, even more so. And some have also died. Um, and all of us uh, live under a dangerous cloud, dark cloud of the pandemic. And as we think about uh, how to live and what uh, we do in the face of uh, such pandemic, of course, many uh, of us are there to battle the pandemic. uh, And that battle is often carried uh, out uh, primarily by scientists, those who are searching desperately for a vaccine and also for some kind of a cure for by epidemiologists who are tracking distribution of the illness and working to control its spread. Um, medical doctors and nurses there on the front lines trying to help those who are who are sick. Politicians too are trying to implement required measures uh, to keep the country running. And then of course economists and business people um, what would we do without them? Making sure that basic goods are produced, that they're distributed, and so forth. And when we observe what's going on um, around us trying to combat um, coronavirus, uh, we may think that maybe as Christians, and especially as theologians, we have little to contribute. Uh, and what we contribute to these efforts that I have named is, of course, to support those efforts. Um, But most of us, we're called to stay at home, stay safe ourselves, make sure not to endanger others, um, which boils down to something like a personal hygiene and social distancing, not much of the fullness of life uh, when you put it in those uh, terms. For the most part, pandemic seems uh, like a major interruption uh, in life. 
major interruption in life as we used to lead it uh, as in our usual way. Um, and here, maybe this phrase, life as usual, that's the key phrase when we think about the interruption here. For although our lives have been seriously and severely disrupted, they have, in an important sense, not have been interrupted. For the truth is that our life goes on. The truth is actually that our life cannot be interrupted. You cannot put life on pause. You cannot uh, do with life as you do with a Netflix movie because something has come up, you uh, press uh, uh, stop a button, and then you go and do what you need to do, and then you return the play button to the play button, and uh, the life starts again, the movie starts again. Unfortunately, we can't do that uh, with our lives. And so the question for all of us is, how do we live with this disruption? Um, how do we live with this menacing cloud that is over us? And the Christian faith, and I think theology as well, has something very important to say about th that very question. In some ways, I, I think that this time is a particularly important time for us to speak out and to speak up on the contribution of the Christian faith. For the central question of the Christian faith is actually what kind of life is worthy of our humanity? How are we to live our lives as creatures of the God, as creatures of the God who has revealed himself in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who was the savior of those who suffered, uh, who was on the mission to free people from the powers of evil, to destroy life, and make uh, life difficult, and to restore us back to something like true life, life abundant, flourishing a life, to make these possible. And I think the central question is, might something like that be possible also under the conditions uh, under which we live? Then in the Christian uh, tradition, this question of the true life was never a, a kind of armchair question of those who are comfortable a question of those whose needs have been, basic needs have been met, and those whose life is not in danger. Uh, it was never a, a kind of a luxury question. The Christmas story, as you will recall, describes coming of Christ into the world as light shining into darkness. Hmm, darkness of imperial oppression, darkness of widespread destitution, darkness of incurable diseases, darkness of hunger, darkness of vulnerability, darkness of precarity of our fragile lives. And what better underscores the fragility of our lives than the pandemic that we are experiencing right now? This little virus has threatened our life uh, around the globe. The question about the true flourishing life for Christians is always a question of how to live that kind of a life as we are surrounded by the forces that uh, push us to make our life and living of our lives false, false, to stifle the flourishing of our lives, to make us uh, languishing. Um, and we can express that in the words of psalmist who asked, um, during the Israelites' exile in Babylon, he asked, well, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? We are now, in many ways, in exile. We are now in a strange land, and we're now in the strange land in our very homes. Can we sing Lord's song in the strange land? Can we overcome our fears so as to act with courage? Can we let go our excessive self-concern, which endangerment tends to produce in us? Can we open ourselves up to help others? Can we live well with loneliness and isolation that pandemic has imposed on many of us, especially the elderly who, in any case, were suffering often from loneliness? Can we leave how to live confined? Can we learn how to live confined in small places, uh, which many with families have to do? How to manage the in inevitable chaos and tensions? Can we do better 
than to experience time of confinement as kind of an empty time, time that just needs to be filled so as to forestall the boredom. Kind of Netflix snacks and more Netflix and more snacks. In a phrase, can we live some of the true life under the cloud that seeks to make our life false? Now, these are questions that uh, accompany us. And if we kind of step back maybe a, a bit from our fears and from immediacy of what, uh, what, what demands our attention, I think we will, we will, these questions will surface. And Christian faith has important resources to help us as we live as exiles in our own homes and in empty cities and towns. This is the time, I believe, and we believe at the center as a team, to ask the fundamental question, what is this brief life of ours about? How can we live so as not to betray our own humanity? Humanity of our loved ones and humanity of our neighbors, how can we do so as we live under oppressive conditions of pandemic? The quick question for us will be to consider in a series of conversations that we are about to introduce and start, what does it mean to say at this time that the God of Jesus Christ, the healer of the sick, the critic of powers, and the crucified and resurrected Savior, what does it mean to say that this God is our God? I want to invite you to follow our conversations. We as a team will be engaged in such uh, conversation on some of the critical uh, issues, uh, hoping to get clarity ourselves about what is at stake uh, and what bearing uh, the situations have on our lives and how to respond, but also hopefully invite you into that conversation and offer some help, some light in this time of darkness. For the Life of the World is a production of the Yale Center for Faith and Culture at Yale Divinity School. This episode featured theologian Miroslav Wolf, founder of the Yale Center for Faith and Culture. You can follow him on Twitter at Miroslav Wolf. For more information, visit us online at faith.yale.edu and subscribe to the show wherever you listen to podcasts. We hope these conversations serve to spark much more with you and your community. So share it with a friend or two and let us know what you think. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week.